because this is a public video, uh, I've been asked by our organization not to share the names of the places where we are. Uh, if you would like to know more details about where we live, exact locations, things like that, send me an email and I'll let you know. Come on, come on. Yasmin and I have been helping the Karang people translate the New Testament and uh, we're just coming to a finish of, with that process and you'll see little details of that and what that means it's in this video. But first let me take you to a really cool place out here on the outskirts of the city. What you see behind me is a volcanic lake that is a lake that was created, uh, formed by a crater of an old volcano. Our journey to Cameroon actually began in Blacksburg, Virginia, at Virginia Tech where Yasmin and I met. And both of us felt that we had a calling to do Bible translation. And we studied linguistics at SIL, translation principles and literacy principles. After that, we were assigned to Cameroon by Wycliffe Bible Translators, but we knew we had to learn French because Cameroon is a French speaking country. It's their, one of their official languages, including English. So we had to study French and the most natural place to go would be right next to the United States, which is Quebec, Canada. And there we studied French for one and a half years. In between all this process from when my wife and I met and when we came to Cameroon, we had our three children, Josiah, Hannah, and Bina all three of whom were raised here in Cameroon. Those years were from 1980s, the early 1980s to the 1990. 1990 we arrived in Cameroon. We didn't know exactly where we were going to go from there. There are over 300 languages here, or close to 300 languages here. And, but then within a year, we knew the Lord was calling us to the Karang language. It's a language that had already been under development and the previous team had uh, gone on and so we were going to replace them. Little did we know that we'd be spending close to three decades there. About the first five years that we spent among the Karang people we were learning their language, their culture and basically how to survive. Then after our first home leave of a year we came back and we started getting more involved in the actual work of translation. In 1997, the translation of the New Testament into the Karang language actually got started. The process of translating is quite extensive. There are many steps involved. The first step, of course, is to do the initial first draft. We have some people that we work with on the initial first draft. As a matter of fact, many people. And that draft was then handed on to me. I did some initial analysis. We worked through some questions that we would take to the village and we did the next step which is called village testing. That involves getting a group of people together in a particular village. There's about 50 Karang villages total. You get into one of these villages uh, in a public place. You read the text to them. They respond to your questions, you listen to how they discuss the scriptures that they've just heard, and based on that interaction, you determine where you still need to improve the translation, where it was understood, where maybe it's not natural, and that aspect needs to be improved. You take that back. This is now on a third draft level. In the early stages of the language development, there was a literacy program. And so we have quite a pool of people that we could choose from who uh, could read and write. Well, these became our revisers. At points, there were as many as 200 revisers involved in our translation. We would send them the translation, distribute it to the different dialect areas, and they would come back with corrections. And now we're talking about maybe the fourth draft. In the past, we had meetings with uh, these revisers who would gather them together in one location and 
we would discuss perhaps one book in its entirety, the book of Mark, for instance, in the village of Yuku, or the book of Acts in the village of Kautau. Those meetings were really instrumental in getting the communities excited about the translation and getting some of the terminology used and understood. Terms like Holy Spirit or terms like how you would refer to Satan or the devil or how would you say righteousness for instance. So after that meeting we would move on to the next level of the translation process which is uh, bringing it to a consultant. The consultant who comes from the outside is an expert who understands the Greek and the Hebrew and he reviews our work not in Karang because he can't understand Karang but in a shared language. In this case it would be French. Most of that process has already been done and all the steps that I just mentioned have already been done. There's left about maybe 15% that the consultant needs to check. And that's where we are now, right at that 15%, that last part. Let me explain that a little bit further later. Let's take a walk around here, it's pretty nice. Before coming to this part of the world, the city, uh, I had made some video clips in the village uh, to show you actually what we are doing right now in the end of the translation process for the Karang New Testament. So why don't let's take a look at that and when that finishes I'll share some prayer requests with you. Technology has changed a lot since we first got here in 1990. At that point, our communication was done by hand-carried mail. Now, we have everything from cell phones, computers that hook up to the internet, so that we can do what was thought impossible in those early days. I'm preparing the, the Book of Colossians to send to Gang David, the literacy coordinator, He's going to get that text that I've prepared for him, and he will retranslate that into French. Then he'll come back with that retranslation in French based on the Karang translation. We will review it together. Once it's reviewed, we'll put it into a special program that can be viewed from a consultant from Ireland. Once he finishes his consultant check, on our translation based on the French. He'll come up with some questions and perhaps even after that, if it requires a meeting, we'll have a Skype meeting with him. So, this is how you can intercede for us. First, we have never tried to do an internet consultant meeting between rural Cameroon and Ireland. We are asking the Lord to make it a certainty. And the consultant has so many other responsibilities. Pray with us as we struggle to this crucial finish line. In addition, long hours at the desk can be exhausting. You can see Abba sucking on a lemon because of a cold. Paul said, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. Those long hours at the desk often feel like that. We know God wants us to finish and finish well. Could you ask him to give us some more stamina, more wisdom, good health, and an open ear to hear his spirit as we tackle the last tricky translation issues. Also, Yesman is reviewing what seems like endless details with ABBA in preparation for typesetting and computer coding that will improve the digital version for smartphones. Lastly, in June, Yesman and I hope to travel home. We want to be home for my mother and for Yesman's dad. So Yesman is saying her last goodbyes here. As for me, Lord willing, I will come back to Cameroon during the next dry seasons to bring the translation to a completion and in that process audio record the Karang New Testament. Please commit our plans to the Lord so that we may be open to any changes he might want.
Many of you have been with us from the beginning. Others have joined us in the process. It is a gift from God, the body of Christ at work, and a testimony to the Lord's promise. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth.